Hey guys, we are back online on Krypton. Uh, there is me, Girish, and uh, Jules. Uh, Girish, over to you now. Yes, yes. We also we still have Jules with us, who is going to give us a talk on Golan in the clouds. So, uh, so yeah, maybe I'll uh, hand it on to Jules. He will he will get a short pre uh, presentation on himself and then start. Okay. So I'll do my presentation just right after this slide here. So welcome to my session about Go in the Cloud. Um, in this session, I'll demonstrate how to deploy Go application in the cloud. In short, we'll speak about serverless Go apps. So let's get started. So about me, um, uh, my name is Joel Michael, also known as Mike. You can find me online as Michael Go or Michael if I was lucky enough to reserve that nickname. I'm a senior web developer at Bokasi. We are always recruiting if you're interested. So just a small pitch about Bokasi. It is an offshore IT service center, over 150 employees globally. In Mauritius, we are located in Eben. It's a great and fun environment to work. So if you love working with new technologies, look no further. Programming has always been my passion. It's been for a very long time now. I enjoy discovering new programming languages, tips, tricks, techniques, and libraries. I've switched to Linux as my daily driver since five years, and I never looked back. I'm not much of a social networking person, so you won't find me on social networking site except if you're on Reddit or LinkedIn. And last but not least of all, I enjoy watching shows like Rick and Morty in my spare times. So for those who did not attend uh, our previous session about Go, Zero to Hero, here's a quick sum up about Go for you. Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable, and efficient software. As can be seen, the syntax is very minimal and friendly to the eye. Go code is organized in packages. For fellow programmers, think of it as libraries or modules. In our instance, we are in the main package. To import any of those, package, or any of those packages, we obviously use the import syntax, followed by the package name or path. Every executable needs an entry point, aka a starting point. And in Go, it is denoted by the function main. We then use the print with new line function in the FMT package to say hello developers in Mandarin. Please note the support for UTF-8. I've been using Go for the past three years, and it easily made it to the top of my favorite uh, programming languages. First off, there are many reasons why I love Go. These are just some of them on top of my head. Go excels in being simple and easy to understand. With a very small language specs document, Go strives to be easy to both read and write. Go is a compiled language. Unsurprisingly, compiled languages are known for their speed, as they are converted directly into machine-level code that can be read directly by the computer. In addition to its quickness as a compiled language, the Go compiler offers additional benefits like being able to check for errors, easier deployment, and ability to optimize your code for efficiency. Another unique feature of Go is the ability to cross-compile your application to run on the different machines with different architectures. Deploying Go applications to production servers or local machines is a breeze. All it requires is moving the final executable file to the targeted location. Sometimes I don't mind taking out, taking out the trash but for my own developer happiness and sanity, I prefer having an automated garbage collection take care of that for me. Go was built by Google, 
who's got magnitude bigger worries than we do when it comes to serving millions of requests. As such, Go was designed with scalability in mind, and Go has many built-in features designed to handle concurrency, most notably Go routines and channels. So what is a cloud? We're speaking about deploying Go to the cloud. The cloud refers to servers that are accessed over the internet and the software and databases that run on those servers. By using cloud computing, users and companies don't have to manage physical servers themselves or run software applications on their own machines. How is it possible? Well, cloud computing is possible because of a technology called virtualization. I'm sure some of you have heard about it. So virtualization allows for the creation of a simulated digital-only virtual computer that behaves as if it were a physical computer with its own hardware. Now, let's dive into what is serverless, because it has been a buzzword for a while. The underlying purpose of this presentation was to push myself into understanding all the hype, be all the hype behind this buzzword. After extensive res research, I have concluded that serverless can be defined as such. In serverless, you do not have to manually provision and manage your servers on the cloud. Traditionally, you would select the spec of your servers and handle all the nitty gritty work of managing those servers. In serverless, you care more about your application's business logic than how to manage your servers holding your application. Serverless apps scale seamlessly. The provider of your serverless solution will take care of creating as much instance or beefing up your servers as needed to handle the workload. This flexibility ensures that there is no downtime in your service due to servers clogging up under heavy load. You no more need to have to future-proof your servers in case traffic increases unexpectedly. Unless you created a killer app, your application most of the time won't be serving a constant flow of traffic. This is true for small to medium-sized companies. Even if traffic drops to near zero, under the traditional architecture, you'd still pay a fixed charge based on your server's spec. In serverless, you only pay for the resources your app uses. Your app will even automatically scale down to zero when it has no work to do. We'll now go through some of the serverless platform that you can use to implement or to deploy your serverless app. These platforms provide platform as a service. Each of them provide a series of fully managed services to make hosting your serverless application with them a delight. So some of the popular one, as we all know, is AWS. And we have Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. Going into the differences between each of these platforms is outside the scope of this presentation, but you're free to investigate and find what suits you best. Since I'm more comfortable with GCP or Google Cloud Platform, I'll choose it in the meantime. Google Cloud Platform offered by Google is a suite of cloud computing services that runs on the same infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end user products, such as Google Search, Gmail, file storage, and YouTube. That suite consists of more than 90 standalone services or so-called products. That's a lot. Obviously, we won't be able to go over all of these products, but we'll focus on only those that will help us deploy our Go app in serverless fashion. 
the three products that interest us are cloud functions, cloud app engine, and cloud run. As we are going through each of these products, you will see that some of our products from GCP will help us implement powerful solution in all in among all of these um, products. So let's start with Cloud Functions. Google Cloud Function is a lightweight compute solution for developers. Allow them to create a single purpose standalone function that responds to cloud events without the need to manage a server or runtime environment. It is good to know that there are two types of cloud functions. One type is triggered by HTTP requests and the other type is triggered by events in the background like PubSub event or GCP product event. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on creating HTTP triggered cloud function. Before we begin using cloud function, we need to ensure that we have a Google account and that we are logged in in the GCP console. After we are logged in in the GCP console, we need to ensure that we create a cloud project, a GCP project. And then the next few things we need to do is to ensure that a billing account is associated to our Google Cloud project and that we have enabled the cloud functions and cloud build APIs. Let me just give me a second that I'll try to showcase it right now. I'll move out of the screen here. Voila. So this is the main site for GCP at cloud.google.com. I'll zoom in a bit for you to be able to see. Every information you need, documentation, support, and why you should use GCP is found at this address. Since I'm already logged in, making sure that I'm logged in to the correct account, voila, I'll head to the console, to the GCP console or Google Cloud console by clicking on the right hand side, the top right hand side of my screen. For the purpose of this presentation, I've already created a project. But you can also create a project very easily. When you land on your, when you go for the first time on the Google Cloud platform, it will ask you to create a project or to select a project if you have already create, created one. If you have a Firebase account and have already created a project there, under the hood, a Firebase account, uh, a Firebase project is no more than a Google Cloud Platform project. In my case, my project name is called Go in the Cloud. Again, I will zoom it just a little bit so all of you can see. Voila. So to create a project, you just click on the drop down uh, select box, which you find up there. Where for me it says go in the cloud, which is right next to the logo, Google Cloud Platform. And in the new popping screen, you select new project. This will walk you through the different steps for you to create a project, which is basically select a name for your project and where you want your project to be located, the region of your project. After you've created your project, you will select your project from that same screen here, or it will be selected by default if you didn't have a project before. 
And an important aspect or an important information about your project that you should know is every project you create on GCP has an ID. And this project ID will be used, uh, will be required when you're working with the G Cloud or Google Cloud SDK. In my case, as you can see with the check mark, my project has already been selected. Next step that I uh, spoke to you about is it is important to associate a billing account to your project. This can easily be done by clicking on the billing product found in the left tab. When you create a project for the first time on Google Cloud Platform, you might be worried that uh, expenses or heavy expenses will be done, but you don't have to worry about it because you can freely uh, test out Google Cloud Platform through a trial. The first time you would register on the Google Cloud Platform, you'll have a free trial. This free trial entitles you to $300, as you can see here, of trial credit, which you can use to trial the project and will last for over a year. So you don't have to worry of being built while testing out GCP or Google Cloud Platform. As you can see here, I've already associated a billing account to my project. So we can move forward on how we, on the different products and on the interface of the Google Cloud Platform. So as you can see, I've already pinned some of the various products that we will be using or we will be discussing throughout uh, throughout my session or throughout this presentation. First off, we spoke about cloud functions. We also mentioned about cloud app engine and cloud run. Those are the three main products we'll focus on. But as we are deploying our Go application, some other products are being used in the background as Cloud Build, Container Registry, Storage, and sure we are using some networking, and logging. To keep this presentation as short as possible, we'll not focus on Firestore, but Firestore is a storage solution from GCP. It's, it's the same as Firebase Firestore, for those of you who are fam familiar with Firebase products. So Cloud Functions. How do we create a cloud function? There are several ways to do it. One of it being you can use the web interface provided to you, what we are looking right now, to create that function. But for us, what we'll do, or what, how we're going to proceed through it, is through the G Cloud SDK. The G Cloud SDK is a command line tool which allows you to interact with your GCP account and with the various project apps found in your GCP account. So I'll now head on to IVS code. Here we have a very simple Go app, similar to our Hello World app. But this is the HTTP version of the Hello World app. As you can see, we are right now in the package Hello World. We have some few imports, and one of those imports is from the Net Standard Library and the HTTP library found in the Net Standard Library. We define a simple handler function called Hello HTTP. This Hello HTTP, in the context of a GCP function, is our entry point which will allow us to handle any HTTP request coming to our cloud function. In this case, we will only send back a hello world and a cloud function. So let's see how can we deploy this cloud function. So to deploy a cloud function is as, is as easy as one um, 
command line that you need to enter. So I'll just copy it and then explain it as we go through it. Here we go. So first of all, we are using the gcloud SDK. If you haven't already installed it, um, I would advise you to do it and then you'll have to go through a init phase with it in which you specify which project you want to use or if you want to create a project. You can create a project as we've seen through the web interface or you can do it from the gcloud SDK. Again, we're specifying that we want to use the functions product after which we specify what actions we want to use uh, for the function, so we are deploying it. We specify the service name, which is here, hello, HTTP. And we specify also the runtime, the Go runtime we want to use. In our case, that will be the Go version we want to use. In this case, we'll be using Go 1.13. As discussed earlier, there are two types of cloud function, HTTP cloud functions and background cloud functions. In our case, our cloud function will be triggered by HTTP and will allow public access to our cloud function through the allow unauthenticated. Let's deploy these cloud functions. What is happening in the background is gcloud SDK is communicating with Google Cloud Platform through an API and sending our source code which is found in the Go Cloud directory to a storage in GCP. And after which another task is being triggered to deploy our cloud functions. This may take up to two minutes, so we'll wait for it to complete. as it is working its way through, depending on your network connection. Every product that you use on Google Cloud Platform has internal integration for monitoring and logging. As we saw, we have another GCP product called logging, and this GCP product called logging has support for stack driver meaning that you can view logs from all of your projects in a single place, or you can scrub through your logs to see if anything has gone wrong. For instance, while your cloud function are executing, you can um, scrub through your logs to see if there are any errors, runtime errors, or if uh, there was an issue during deployment. Just waiting for it to finish uploading. Here we go. And now it has done upload uh, uploading. Just move that slightly above so that you can see what has happened. So we have a build ID. It has already provisioned the servers with enough memory for our cloud function. The entry point is hello HTTP and this cloud function has been deployed to the Asia Northeast 2 region. As you can see, this is a default that I've set in my Google Cloud Platform project. The runtime, as we specified in our command line argument, is go 113. And we have a nice mess. we have a nice status active on it. We now head on to our browser confirm that it has indeed been properly deployed. We'll refresh the web interface for the cloud functions. Connection is slightly slow, but as you can see, our cloud function has been deployed. You can see all the information that we saw in uh, the console displayed right here. If we click on our function, we'll get more information 
about uh, statistic of the function, how it has been accessed, how many times has it been in, in, been invoked, and when was the last time it was deployed. We can even confirm the trigger URL uh, to test our cloud functions. And this is the front-facing URL that the public uh, or the other users will be using. So if we click on it, we should see a nice message. Hello world, I'm a cloud function. So here, this is how easy it is to deploy a cloud function. So a cloud function, the unit of work for a cloud function is a function, as you've seen. We've just deployed a function. This is very fine grain. And probably you're thinking to yourself, well, deploying a cloud function is quite hard. I mean, if I already has a project and I have to split it into several functions and then deploying each part of it, this can be tedious. This can be very tedious over the long run. So let's see what are other serverless solution we have from GCP. So like I said, what if functions are too fine grain and you want to deploy a whole app or several microservices? This is when Cloud App Engine comes into play. It is a highly scalable, it allows you to build highly scalable application on a fully managed serverless platform. And App Engine has two envir environments. We have the standard and we have the flexible environment. As good measure, I always use standard since it supports the latest Go runtime. And it allows my Go services to scale down to zero. The App Engine's standard environment um, makes it easy to build and deploy an application that runs reliably under heavy load and with large amounts of data. Deploying our Go app on App Engine is very easy. We just need to use the gcloud app deploy command. Again, we'll head back to our editor. This time I will check out in the App Engine branch. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have a simple HTTP server. Same as before, we have our package main that we've discussed in previous slides. And this package main creates a small HTTP server. We have some few logging function. And as we had for our cloud function, we have an entry point for our HTTP request, which is the handler function. The handler functions um, will print hello world, I'm running from App Engine. And this HTTP server will run on a port that is defined by our environment variable port, which is provided to us by the GCP um, product that we are using. In our case, that will be Cloud App Engine. But if we don't have any port coming from our environment variable, we'll default to port 8080. Then we'll listen and serve on that port. If there's any error, we'll fade a log. All the logging message will go to the GCP logging product. Another thing that you might notice here is the presence of an app.yml file. The app.yml file defines uh, different configuration settings for Cloud App Engine. In our case, we'll only define a configuration, which is we'll use the Go 1.14 runtime. So let's deploy this. Uh, I will go up on App Engine.
again in the background what is happening is our source code is being sent to gcp it's telling us if we want to deploy that service I'm just gonna say yes here it is much more prevalent or much more explicit that we are uploading files to the Google Cloud Storage. It is updating our service. In my case, that would be the default service since I didn't specify a service name. In the meantime, I'll head in my browser to the App Engine web interface so we can confirm successful deployment. In App Engine, you can have several services or microservices. Usually, by default, you have one service, which is called default. And for that service or for the various services that you have, you have different versions of those services. In our case, we have a new service that is actually being deployed. Right now, what GCP is doing is setting the traffic split for service default. So all traffic that was routed through the previous version of our default service will be rerouted to the new version of our service. I already had a uh, version of that service running before for testing purposes. And the routing has been done. So if I refresh, the Google Cloud Platform web interface. You should see that all traffic has been rerouted to the new version of our default service. Let's now head to our deployed service, which is found at this URL. And I seen, voila, hello world, I'm running from App Engine. This was how easy you can deploy your application with the Cloud App Engine. Let's now say that you have a container and that you want to deploy your container, uh, your container packaging, all the libraries you need, application you need. Uh, in a serverless architecture. There comes Cloud Run. So Cloud Run is a managed compute platform that enables you to run stateless containers that are invocable via web requests or pub sub events. The de facto or industry standard for creating containers, as we all know, is Docker. So what will you so what we'll do now is use that same Go app you've seen before and deploy it, uh, build it in a container and deploy it to Cloud Run. For that, we'll use two uh, separate command. The first command is using the cloud build but the cloud build product from GCP. So in the first command, we send our Docker file and source file to cloud build to build an image for us and push that image to Google Container Registry, GCR. And the second command that we'll use, will create a new cloud run service called Hello World and uses the image that we've uploaded to Google Container Registry. So we'll head back our application, our editor. So 
reach out to our feature run branch. And in that feature of our branch, our main.go file hasn't changed. It is similar to what we used for App Engine. But we now have a Docker file. In that Docker file, I'm doing a multi-stage build. Our first stage from line one to nine uses our base image Golang 1.15.1 Alpine. This stage, I've named it the builder stage because the sole responsibility of this stage is to build a single executable file using the go build tool. The environment variable cgo enable equal to zero, make sure that the file that we are building is fully static and we are specifying our targeted operating system to be Linux. So our binary hello will be built for Linux. On line 12 to 18, we are packaging this binary in, a, in, an, in an image. And that image is a scratch image, which will contain no other dependencies, files, even a package manager. Nothing will be present in here, just our binary, which we are copying from our multi-stage um, builder. So let's see how we can deploy this uh, image or container to GCP. First command that we will run is to submit our Docker file and the source file to Cloud Build. Cloud Build will build the Docker file for us and push the Docker image that has been created to Google Container Registry. As we can see, we are submitting our Docker file with the tag gcr.io. The next few lines are our project ID, Arabic dash form dash a numeric value. And afterward, we are specifying our container name. In our case, it will be hello world. A tarball, a temporary tarball is created with all the four files that we have in our Google Cloud. And this tarball is submitted to Google Cloud Build and Google Cloud Build will take care of building our container for us. As you can see, it is stepping through our Docker file, pulling the base image, going step by step through our Docker file. And right now it is at step six where it was building our Go app. This has already been done. It just pushed it to Google Container Registry. And the next few lines, we saw that it has been successfully deployed on Cloud Run. Oh, sorry, the next few lines so that it has successfully been uh, stored in the Google Container Registry. Now we'll deploy it on Cloud Run. So same as for our functions and our app engine, we need to specify a service name. In our case, that will be hello world. We specify the image we'll be using, which we've just um, stored on the Google Container Registry at this URL. And we are also uh, specifying that we want our platform to be fully managed using the argument uh, platform managed and that we want public requests uh, and we want that um, application to be public facing. We don't want any authentication on it. Let's now deploy it. So as you can see, it is deploying a new service. It will create the revision, route the traffic and setting the proper um, 
identity and permissions. And voila, our service Hello World has been successfully been deployed. And this is the revision number for, or the revision tag for our service Hello World. And we can find this Cloud Run service we've just deployed at this at the following URL. But I'll show you through the web interface how you can access. In back to the web interface, we'll go to our Cloud Run. And as you can see, the Hello World service has been successfully deployed to the Asia Northeast 2 region. This is set by default in my project, but you can select any region you want to deploy to. If we click on the Hello World service, we'll get more details, metrics, revision logs about our service and how much traffic it has uh, handled recently. So as we've seen in the console, the revision that has been deployed is the Hello World uh, 001 with revision, which has just been deployed one minute ago. And to access our service, we can use the following URL. And here it is, hello world, I'm from Cloud Run. And this was how easy it can be to deploy any application or even you go up to Cloud Run. As you saw, in many of those uh, circumstances, we have been using Cloud Bill. Cloud Bill allows you to automate your builds and deployment and can deploy to cloud functions, cloud app engine, and cloud run. I won't bore you with the pricing, but what you should know is the Google Cloud pricing calculator allows you to calculate the total estimated cost of your services running across different GCP products. Each GCP product has its own pricing page and documentation. I cannot stress enough how great their documentation is, so I highly encourage all of you to dive into them to learn about their products. If you want a quick overview about GCP and the range of products, you can also head to the Google Cloud Platform YouTube channel. These videos have helped me understand the power and flexibility of GCP products and how I can leverage my Go application using them. OK, so thank you for attending uh, my presentation about Go in the cloud. I hope uh, that will give you an idea on how you can deploy Go uh, application easily to the cloud. You can do it the traditional way where you have a single binary and send it to a server through SSH or something like that. Or you can simply uh, do an automated deployment using GCP products or AWS or even Microsoft Azure. Thank you very much, Jules. Uh, we are back. Uh, Girish, myself, and Jules. Uh, Jules, you can cancel the screen sharing now, and we get your camera back. Uh, so that was a nice presentation. Even I got to learn a couple of things about uh, about the Google Cloud, uh, our GCP. And uh, I was trying to to compare and contrast in my head GCP versus AWS. Uh, these days, I do not have a lot of money to spend. So even before spending on GCP, I think twice, and I go for you know smaller platforms like DigitalOcean, Linode, and it's yep. there, but that's for 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 me. Uh, looking at the live stream, uh, let me tell you that uh, in fact, 
there was a question by Sandeep. Uh, he wanted to compare GCP versus AWS, exact same thing that I was doing in my head. So, uh, okay, so would, you like you, say, would you like to so say something like that? I, I guess you are the expert on AWS. <laughs> I'm more well, of a GCP guy. Not, not so, but uh, uh, maybe when you watch the videos about people uh, uh, telling things about GCP, uh, is there anything in particular? Because I showed uh, in one of your previous slides, you recommended some videos. So is there something particular that you want to say about GCP? One thing that I want to say about GCP is the cost is very low. Uh, before I was running a Linode server, but uh, I wasn't getting a lot of traffic to my Linode server. So I switched on to, this, to GCP because it scales down to zero. So whenever my applications were not being used or my services that I've deployed were not being used, I didn't pay for it. One thing that I like about GCP is the trial that they give you. When, so when you start using G GCP, you get $300 and you get a full year of trial. So you don't have to pay for anything. You can just go through it and try it. Other things is GCP integrates well with all the different services we have. For instance, you, uh, I was speaking that we, there's more than 90 products in GCP and all those products integrates well together. This is something that I really like. I don't know if, if AWS does that, but I'm not going to compare because I'm I'm not on Apple, but for for instance, in my in my presentation, you saw that I've deployed to Cloud Run. But before deploying yes. to Cloud Run, I had to create a container, and to create that con container, I used GCP Cloud uh, Cloud Build under the run, which built mm. the container for me and deployed it to another GCP product, which is called uh, Google Cloud uh, Google Container Registry similar to Docker Hub. So okay, let, let, me, let, let me just stop you here before you continue. Uh, yes. are, you, are you saying that if somebody, let's say Girish right now wants to experiment with GCP and with a trial account of $300, okay? Will he be, yes. will he be able to do all of this? Like you yes, know, to build a container? Ah, okay, nice, Girish. Yes, yes, yeah. he can like, <laughs> go ahead. I did, okay. try, I did try it with, uh... Actually, Joki told me about that. I did try it with uh, for container applications like Kubernetes. Yeah, it was it was pretty nice, but I just started like uh, two weeks two weeks ago, so not much that I can say right now. Yeah. But then uh, I would actually uh, oh, okay, Jules, I will let you continue. No, no, go on. No, no, it's it is just that. Every GCP product integrates well together. For instance, if you have to do login in the tra in the traditional fashion, you'll have to care for a server that will actually take all your log, like log stash or something like that. Yes. But in but but in GCP, you have a specific product called uh, GCP login where you have all your metrics, your logs associated to the various services that you have deployed on either uh, in a serverless architecture or in the all manual ways like using Kubernetes and so on. I mean, it is it is a very nice experience. I myself, I'm a newbie at GCP. <laughs> I've just switched over. But from what I've experienced so far, it is a great experience. And since Go is compiled to a single binary, it makes it even easier to deploy your, to deploy your application on GCP. Nice. Uh, well, uh, listening from your experience on GCP, I can tell you that Probably we'll see you again for DevFest, uh, okay. where there will be a lot of topics on uh, on Google, you know, the Google Developers Group and the various topics. Probably uh, it will be very nice for for you if you can do, you know, something more rather than uh, you've done something uh, about Go during DevCon. Probably you can do something which is more focused on the on on, on GCP and uh, how you're taking the full power. So okay, yes, sure. uh, we'll be glad to see you again. And thank you very much. This was your second presentation in a row, although yes. your previous presentation was, was a shared one. But uh, yeah. thank you for, for your time. Nice presentation. I do not see any other question, but good things about your presentation. Uh, all right, cool. So that would be all for us today in this pre presentation, Jules and Girish. Uh, let me switch us back to to the speaker loop we're gonna have uh, sorry to the sponsor loop we're gonna have a short break uh, 